Hi, this is Mary, and today we're going to talk about sewing down facings on knitted garments. Sometimes in a pattern, you'll have a doubled edge that will be folded under to create a neat, sturdy finish, but we'll want to secure it on the inside to keep everything tidy. There are several different methods that you can use to do this, and I'll show you a few here. The main things that you'll need are a sewing needle and thread or embroidery floss, or um, some firmly spun sock yarn and a tapestry needle. Usually you'll wanna use a color that matches your garment, but here I'm gonna use contrasting colors so that you can see what I'm doing. If you haven't already blocked your piece with the facing turned underneath, you'll want to steam the facing turned toward the wrong side so that it lays nice and flat. You can also use pins to anchor the fabric and make sure that you're sewing everything down evenly. We'll work with the wrong side of our piece facing us today. I've actually got a sample that I'm gonna show you on. So the first one that we'll look at is called the herringbone stitch. This method is taken from traditional embroidery and hand sewing, and it's quite decorative and flexible. If you've ever done a backstitch seam, the way this is worked is, will feel familiar with the needle pointing in the opposite direction from the way you're working. If you're right-handed, then you'll be working from left to right, but the needle will be facing to your left. If you're left-handed, then you'll go vice versa. I recommend using a thread and sewing needle for this stitch to avoid adding bulk to the fabric. I'm just gonna get some thread here. You want to thread your needle and then anchor it in the corner here on the corner of the facing when it's turned underneath. And I usually do a little double square knot to anchor everything, but you can anchor it however you like. You'll definitely want to weave in this end later. The first thing that you'll do is keep this corner pinched in your non-needle hand. Then go and take just a very small loop from the main fabric. You don't wanna go all the way through to the right side, but again, you'll go in the opposite way from where your needle's facing. So here I'm going right to left since I'm right-handed. Pull it through, but don't pull it so tight because we wanna leave a little bit of slack. Then you'll go a little further over and run your needle through the facing fabric as you would in a regular knitwear seam. So here I'm just gonna go through the edge stitch a little bit. You can take a wider stitch here since you're not gonna go through to the front of the fabric. Then pull it through. Then you'll keep repeating these two maneuvers, so just go over a little bit and skim. And then take some from the facing fabric. And I'll show you a few more stitches just so you can see what the seam looks like. You always wanna leave your thread loose on this because this seam is very flexible and it allows the facing to move a little bit as you are wearing the sweater. You also wanna make sure that you're going under the thread that's coming out. You don't wanna go you know, under here to make a loop. Do a couple more stitches. You wanna try, try and do as regular of intervals as possible. I've kind of gotten a little less even, but this is just for you to see. No one else is gonna see it. So if it's not as even, then it's not, not a huge deal. All right, this is my last little stitch here that I'll show. 
But as you can see, the fabric does move back and forth, and that's a good thing, I think, in garments because you don't want it to be inflexible. And then look how invisible that is from the right side. So obviously this isn't the whole seam, but I just wanted to show you a little small bit to see what the, the stitches looked like. The second method that I'm gonna show here is called a whip stitch. And I'm gonna show it on a little swatch made to look like a tiny bit of a facing. So here I'm gonna use a tapestry needle and some yarn. You can also use thread, but the, the tapestry needle and yarn will work just fine here. You'll have your needle going in the same way as you work. So if you're right-handed, you'll work from right to left or vice versa if you're left-handed. You'll start similarly as you would to a herringbone stitch. So you'll anchor your yarn I'm gonna work right to left since I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna start at this corner. And with yarn, when I'm sewing, sometimes I like to anchor it by going through once and then going through that same place where I put the yarn the first time, but then splitting it with my needle. I don't know if you can see that, but you'll just wanna go through the plies, kind of like a Russian join. go. So once you've anchored your sewing yarn, um, you're going to take your tapestry needle or your sewing needle and just skim a very small stitch, making sure that you're not going through the right side. Depending on your fabric, you can kind of take a whole loop on the wrong side. Since this is a shaker rib fabric, it doesn't show if I put it through a whole loop of a knit stitch. So I'm going to pull that through. And then I'm gonna go under the facing fabric and then through to the right side. You can pull this a little tighter and then take another small stitch from the, facing fa from the main fabric and then under the facing. This is also a little bit decorative, makes a nice little banded edge, but it can also be pretty invisible if you make really small stitches. I'm going to do a few more here. You'll just alternate going through a small stitch on the main fabric. and then from under to over on the facing. This can also be a really helpful stitch for sewing pocket linings on, on the underside of a garment, because you also want those seams to be invisible from the right side. But here you can kind of see how that whip stitch looks from the wrong side. And then when we turn it over, it's also invisible from the right side of the fabric. The last stitch that I'm gonna show you today is a variation of the mattress stitch, which is what we often use to join pieces of knitwear. This will also have you working in the same direction as your needle is facing. You can also use either thread or yarn here. As with the first two methods, you're gonna anchor your yarn or thread. Again, I'm gonna do this loop and through and I think you might be sensing a pattern here the first thing that we'll do is take just a tiny stitch from the facing fabric just skim it 
But then here, we're gonna go through kind of as we would for a regular mattress stitch on the facing fabric. Here I'm gonna do with a half stitch seam allowance, but you could do a full stitch if you wanted. So just go through a couple bars on the very edge of the facing fabric. And then we're gonna take another small stitch from the main fabric. So we'll just go into the loop on the main fabric, pull the yarn through, and then take another stitch from your facing. You'll keep alternating skimming from the main fabric and going through the facing fabric like this in regular intervals. As always, I'll do a few more stitches here. So now you can see that the stitch is pretty stretchy and invisible from the right side, it makes a really nice seam. There you have it, neat anchored facings. Happy stitching. Thank you.